we're back in it. We are. Oh my god. And already, I just I'm reminded of how much I love this music. We just broke out of a hospital, didn't we? Yeah. Excellent. How's our heart doing? 215. Oh wow, we need to go get, get ourselves plugged into a wall real quick. Yeah. Just for a little while. Amy drove fast. She pushed her car hard, but it was small and old and could never outrun the police. Norbert had been right. The fire escape was unguarded, and they made their way to the garage without any hiccups. <laughs> Bob had carried just... Did you just take up? That's breaking... <laughs> That's not canon. That's... You're breaking my immersion, Vivian. <laughs> Vivian. Bob had carried Josephine, who was still feeling weak. Tampering with one's heart was definitely not the best of escape plans. They'd found an ambulance, and Ronnie had picked up the lock. Now they had a life support system for Josephine. Amy ignored the red lights and blazed through a crossing. She was shaking, but a part of her clearly enjoyed all this. Drive by the rules, Amy. We want to avoid attention. I know what I'm doing. I know how to drive a car. Clearly, the part of Amy that enjoyed all this was still overshadowed by the part that was mortified. She stepped on the brakes hard as they hit another red light, and the wheels screeched, moaning as the old automobile ground to a halt. Bob, who was riding shotgun, was far too big for any seat in the car, bumped his head and cursed loudly. Thought you said you knew how to drive. You're gonna get us killed, missy. No, I won't. Her heart still says 213. <laughs> now that's relieved. <clears throat> My name is Amy, and I was told to stop at red lights. <sighs> you were told not to draw attention. Keep driving like a girl and you'll get us caught. Oh, come on, Bob. Excuse me? Bob turned to the back seat and was met by two very unamused faces. I didn't mean it that way. I just... Know when to stop, Bob. Know when to stop. <laughs> I'm actually, I love Josephine's hair. Yeah. It's, it's it, like, I, I like it, the very short cut and then the two cuteness tendrils, of yeah. course. It's standard in any good haircut. <laughs> Josephine was still dizzy and sweating all over. She kept her eyes shut and focused on breathing. The light turned green and the car <clears throat> nudged into motion again. The humming of the engine was soothing. How are you feeling, Joe? Like I just pulled a cord from my heart. I'll be fine in a moment. I just need rest. Should we call that doctor when we're safe? Maybe. I don't know. Let's just get to somewhere safe. She couldn't believe they'd escaped from a guarded hospital in broad daylight. It was too good to be true. So what do you think the other the catch is going to be? That there's a, like a tracker chip in her heart or something? Maybe. And they couldn't have pulled it off without Norbert. She wondered whether the friendly doctor was in trouble. She owed him her life twice over now. The hospital was in the lower part of Midtown where the real estate agent wasn't... Where the real estate wasn't expensive, but there were patients. Wouldn't have to see poor people. Yeah. Amy lived considerably more uptown. She wasn't quite in the center of town where the gardens were, but she wasn't that far from it either. Amy took great care to ensure that no neighbors saw them enter her little place. Especially Bob. Once they were safely indoors, Amy closed the curtains of her room and looked like a heavy weight had just been lifted from her shoulders. The apartment was a single room, studio, much like Josephine's, except this one had been decorated by someone with considerably more expensive taste. It isn't big, but we'll survive here one night. Bob scoffed. <laughs> fancy place you got, and in a fancy neighborhood. Actually, lots of students live in this area. It's not that expensive. I couldn't have afforded this place. Me neither. Then again, I couldn't afford college neither. <laughs> It's really not that fancy. Just make sure the neighbors don't see you. And if someone rings the doorbell, hide. And don't leave unless you have to. Calm down. We'll be good. Thanks again for letting us stay. We all owe you one. And sorry again for impersonating you. Though it was fun. <laughs> Did you really give my number to someone? Yeah, I figured I'd have an easier time getting in if I flirted with the nurse. Was he actually cute? She was. Can you show me all the exits from the building? Gotta plan ahead in case we need to leave in a hurry. Sure, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> just... 
Wait, hold on. I need to <laughs> determine whether or not I'm bisexual yet. <laughs> I haven't had to confront that yet. This might take a moment. <gasps> Can I take a nap on your bed? I'm still not feeling great. Go ahead. Make yourself a... Got anything to eat here? I'm so hungry. My stomach hurts. Amy sighed. <sighs> eat anything you want. But shouldn't we hook you up to a charger, Josephine? The life support machine worked just as Norbert had described. Having an inflow of power instantly made her feel a little bit better. Josephine fell asleep as soon as she was plugged in. Do 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 I wish we hadn't used that episode title already, because this would have been perfect. You got any sausages or a steak? You look like you could afford a steak. Stop thinking I'm rich, and no, I don't have sausages, I'm a vegan. Figures, no wonder you're so skinny if all you eat is grass and salad. God damn it, Bob! Uh, stand aside and let me cook, I'll show you. Bonnie sat down and stroked Josephine's hair. She didn't wake up. I have to teach you people to sleep with one eye open, she thought. Then again, Ronnie had learned that trick years ago and had been tired ever since. Maybe it was better to sleep well every now and then. How's her heart doing? Back up to full. When Josephine woke up, the first thing she noticed was a strange smell. It was as if someone had made delicious food then burnt the hell out of it. What's that smell? Amy cooked, then we decided I should have cooked instead. Amy was in the corner, looking a bit grumpy. In my defense, the tofu burned because I had to argue with Bob. Chin up, rich girl, you were right. Vegan chow is delicious, when army girl makes it. <laughs> Thank you, heart attack man. How are you feeling, Joe? Better. The pain is gone, and now that I smell food, I'm ravenous. Help yourself. We need to talk about what comes next. You can't stay here. The police have my name. They'll come looking for me very soon. Then the plan should be to get as far away from the city as we can. Yeah, but where and how? I can always go back to the army, but I won't if there's any other way. I have some relatives in the country. How do you guys feel about farm life? Definitely not enthusiastic, but that might be the only option. Couldn't we get new identities and stay here? You did that for months. Trust me, it's not fun looking over your shoulder the whole time. I say we get out, try to make it to another city if a farm's not possible. I don't know, I've only ever lived in the city, and I did vow to redecorate the gardens with dead rich people. You did! You did, and I'm kind of... I'm kind of hoping we still go with that <laughs> plan. But, you know... We'll see where this goes. I don't think anyone will blame you for giving up on that tree. I might. She saw herself in the mirror. I need new clothes. I laid some of mine on the bed for you. How? I didn't know whether or not you were in the hospital willingly, so I prepared, a, I prepared for your escape. Damn, good look. Are these army clothes? My old parade uniform. It's practical and whoever's hunting you won't be looking for a service member. And it makes you look badass. <laughs> also a little bit valor stealing, but you know, that's for a different <laughs> That's a discussion for a different time. <laughs> Suddenly the doorbell rang. Everyone froze. Josephine crouched behind the bed and looked at Ronnie. Ronnie was at the stove, walked softly to the door and produced a large kitchen knife. There was a grim smile on her face. Amy was clearly terrified. She didn't move. Bob got up slowly and flexed his muscles. The bell rang again. Be ready to run. Joe and Amy, you stay behind me and Bob. Ronnie opened the door, grabbed the person on the other side by the throat, and threw him down on the floor. With speed that seemed impossible for such a large man, Bob leapt to top the man on the floor and pressed his head down. Move and I'll turn your bones into gravel. C couldn't if I wanted to, Mr. Lawson. <laughs> Norbert, Bob, get off him. Bob got up, grunting. 
Sorry, Doc, I didn't recognize you in that ridiculous coat. It's warm, and it's practical, and I don't have to defend my fashion decisions to you. <laughs> Ronnie closed the door. Yeah, Doc, what's with the coat? You look like a flasher. Norbert was indeed a funny sight in his long beige trench coat that was much too big for him. He looked like a big detective's very small brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's the greatest... That's the greatest, like, description I've ever heard. <laughs> that's very good. Norbert, are you alright? What are you doing here? I... I needed to tell you something. I also came to check on you. I figured I would wear a disguise. And you thought dressing like a pulp detective in a black and white movie was going to help you go unnoticed. Okay, so coat was a mistake. I'll remember that. Can we move on to more important things now? Sure. How do we know you're not a scout or bait? I risked my entire career coming here. And we risked our lives getting out. I'm going to have to search you. You're wasting your time, but go ahead. Ronnie began a frantic and somewhat heavy-handed body search while Norbert was still lying on the floor. So, why are you here, Norbert? What did you want to tell us? I... Ugh. Fake Amy, can you be a little less violent about it? One would think this would feel like nothing compared to the way I punched you in the hospital. <laughs> you would be right, that punch really hurt. Anyway, the hospital is tracking both Mr. Lawson and Miss Lace. How? Did they install chips in our brains or something? Not your brains, Bob. You had bypass surgery. Both of your hearts can be tracked by until your debts, debts are paid. Hmm. So the police know where we are? Not yet. At least not when I left. The hospital prefers to use their own agents to bring back indebted patients. I see. Why? Because what you did was not technically illegal. Theoretically, you could be paying your debt while working. But since you two escaped to mid-treatment... They can surmise pretty easily that we won't be able to pay. So they'll track you down and drag you back. Then you'll be contractually bound to working for them until your debt is paid. I was gonna be like, wait, so wait, what do they get out of it then? Because they, they can... Like, insurance still exists. They can tell pretty easily whether or not someone will be actually able to pay for them. And my thought was, why are they putting so much effort? And then it's like, oh! So then they work back for them until... Right. But also, why do they put so much effort into that in real life? Because that's just already what happens. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep! Which means forever, of course. What could I possibly do to a hospital? They need none of my skills. No, but legally they can rent you out to someone who does. Like Netflix. And how long would you work for them before an unfortunate accident? What can we do? I can't very well give up my heart. I know where they store the information. It could be erased from the servers. Mm, so why didn't you do it? I couldn't. Not alone, I lack all the... Guts. I was going to say skills. Why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel we've met less, like... Maybe a few hours ago, and I already feel like you just have this burning hatred for everything about my character. <laughs> do we, do we, d did I fight you in a previous life? <laughs> do you want to throw down? I know Taekwondo. <laughs> Not very good at it. Still, still only got my white belt, but still. <laughs> he doesn't have a mic. Not one that I can find anyway. Slowly, Norbert got up. We just got out. If we get caught in there... You'll never get out again. This sounds like a trap. What proof do you have that anyone is actually tracking us? None. They're just going to have to trust me. I believe it. Not because I trust the doc, but because it sounds like something those bloodsuckers would do. Don't forget he's one of them. What do you think, Joe? I'd like to think I've gotten at least a few points in my favor. <laughs> No? <laughs> Josephine thought about it. The hospital was the last place she wanted to be. Going back was like burst, busting out of death row and then breaking back in. But maybe she hadn't busted out of death row yet. Not really. If what you say is true, why haven't they found us yet? 
They interrogated me quite thoroughly. I told them you were going out of town immediately. I also told them that activating the trackers might cause a glitch. A glitch in my fucking heart? I lied, but I'm their foremost cardiac and cybernetics expert. They had no reason not to listen. Dead patients don't bring in money, after all. So you're saying you brought us some time? I think that window is already closing. Did they hurt you when they questioned you? No, the way your friend punched me, they didn't even entertain the thought that I might be working with you. You aren't. Not yet. I trust him. His story makes sense. So... Yes, we're going to break into the hospital and erase those records. I love this! There's, like, like if you've ever watched, like, a really good revenge film, mm -hmm. like, y you feel how it's building, and I'm like, this is great! This is, this is, this. and also, it's a revenge film, but also the undercurrent is that they're trying to defeat capitalism. And it's cyberpunk. And it's cyberpunk. What more do you want? <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone was quiet for a while. I mean, if you're in, that is. I get it if you don't want to go back there, Bob, and I can't force you either, Ronnie. I believe at this point you're asking everybody if they want in on one last job, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> you already risked everything for me. Bob got up. I'm in, alright, on one condition. We wipe out everyone else's debts, too. I like that. Deal. Not gonna lie, this is a suicidal idea, and I don't like it. I understand. I don't want you risking yourself either. And you would go without me? Screw that, I'm with you. Great. Now all we need is the least suicidal plan we can come up with quickly, and then we're moving out. Awesome, let's finish our meal and go. We are gonna take the time to finish this meal. I spent time <laughs> cooking and preparing it, and you will damn well enjoy it. <laughs> uh, guys! Four heads turned at once. Everyone had sort of forgotten that Amy was there. Yes? Can I... Any chance I could... Spit it out, sister. Could I maybe come to... What? You do realize that this will most likely put you in jail for the rest of your life, unless they shoot you instead. Yeah, or no, I might not fully realize that, but I've been an activist since I was a teenager. Now I look at you and I feel like this would be the first time I actually helped someone. Like, breaking out of the hospital made me feel more alive than a million rallies or student union meetings would. I feel like I would regret staying here. There are safer ways to get your adrenaline rush. I understand. I wouldn't be useful in there. More likely I'd just get in the way. But I've done my research on people with hospital debt, and I want to help them. This rich girl has more spine than Doc over there. Let her come. I like how we're all like up here in left time, like, yeah, we're gonna bust in there. And like, two scenes ago, everyone we knew just got gunned down all yeah. at once. <laughs> Like, I feel like we're forgetting that in all of our gung-ho. Anyway, Amy looked at Bob like a policeman just gave her a thumbs up for speeding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. No problem, kid. <laughs> Is this what you were looking for, a big thumb up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your psychiatrist act was pretty impressive. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I want this. And welcome aboard. I wish I'd had those kinds of guts when I was your age. Oh, guts? You mean like in in that one manga? <laughs> what is it? Um, uh, very, very angry. Was that the name of it? Oh, uh, you haven't read that one. <laughs> it's way Allegedly. too long. It's way too. Have you seen Allegedly. it? Allegedly, there's like hundreds and hundreds of chapters in it. How how is one supposed to read it all? <laughs> Come to think of it, I was probably around your age when I joined the military. I think you'll do fine. Great. Thank you so much. Amy's absolutely about to die, yeah. isn't she? Thanks for letting me come die with you. <laughs> but what are we gonna do, exactly? Norbert? Yes, are we all remembering I'm here now? <laughs> Both the tracker system and the debt records are stored on the hospital's restricted air. 
To get there, we need a key from Security HQ. I take it both places are guarded. Yes. Yes, of course they are guarded. <laughs> our best bet is to talk our way past them. We'll need disguises. What are we going to say? I can say I'm trying to turn on your tracker safely. You can say you are part of the investigation. Well, we do know this case pretty well. To begin, we need to get into the hospital in the first place. I can go through the main entrance, steal some clothes, and let you in through the back door. And then we'll get the key from the HQ and go past the guards to the restricted area? Mm, they're not expecting us. We might be able to pull it off. But what exactly will we be doing up there? There's a room full of computers. We just need to wipe them clean. Has anyone brought a good strong magnet with them? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Puts away bottle of Clorox and washcloth. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured it was gonna be... Oh, you want to use WD-40 for that. <laughs> but also, no, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> The way we came seems the easiest way out. We just have to hide the car carefully. It's a risky plan. Yeah, but we're in a video game, so it'll probably work. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, but we're in a cyberpunk revenge game, so it probably won't. Oh, you're right. We're all probably going to be dead by the end of this, actually. <laughs> it's the only one we have. Unless we suddenly are not dead. Mmm. You ever thought of that? As the others packed Amy's car, Norbert gave Josephine a quick checkup. What did I tell you about messing with the implant? Yes, some people actually are that stupid. You're lucky your stunts didn't put you into cardiac arrest. Seems fine now, though. Ronnie almost broke your nose. Not the first time I've been punched. I'm alright. Your soldier friend doesn't seem to have any problem with violence, though. Ronnie is much nicer when you get to know her. Isn't it good to have someone with a hefty punch around during this kind of thing? You do remember our talk about helping and hurting. You asked her to punch you. And you just said that you've been punched before? Yes. Once. I'm just worried that she'll do something impulsive. We need to keep our heads cool. Ronnie is reliable. Should I take the charger with me? The doctor in me says yes, but it could be cumbersome. My thoughts exact. We'll leave it here then. We'll just have to make it back in six hours. I brought some medicine from the hospital. Can't give you more time, but it can numb the pain. Great. I'll take a painkiller before we go. My chest hurts a bit whenever I'm not plugged into this thing. Oh, and Norbert? Yes? I'm really glad you came back. Me too. Uh, for now, at least. Can't wait until I die about two chapters from now. <laughs> at my funeral, tell everyone that... Tell my co-workers that... Well, uh, actually, it's probably better we don't. <laughs> <laughs> they sat in the car outside the hospital. It was already getting dark, and a heavy shower of rain washed the streets. This was the first time Josephine had seen the building from the outside. It was formidable. There were hospitals and there were fortresses. Jenner Private looked more like a fortress. The building was, squat slab, was a squat slab of leveled gray concrete and glass, with very few doors and a lot of cameras. A small swarm of drones flew around it constantly. The guards were all dressed as nurses, but they carried a lot of weapons for health professionals. Why does this building look so much like a prison? Well, have you ever read Foucault? <laughs> <laughs> no, just never got around to it, I guess. Listen, there's just so much manga that I want to read, and it's there's definitely not enough time for me to get to all of it. You know, I have all the volumes of Sailor Moon sitting on my shelf, and I just haven't been able to read them yet. I want to. I plan on it. But there's just so long. <laughs> what is Usagi going to get up to next week? I want to know. <laughs> Anyway, officially it's for the safety of the patients. Victims of violence are often at risk of renewed attempts on their lives. And conveniently, it makes keeping patients in very easy. 
I think this is meant to be Josephine. How many exits did this monstrosity even have? Quite a few, despite appearances, actually. Tons of supply trucks and hundreds of ambulances need access and have to be able to move fast. That should work to our advantage. Won't all the large exits be heavily guarded? They are, but that spreads the guards really thin. As you can see, the perimeter is only patrolled by drones. Shouldn't we get going? Aren't they going to turn on the trackers any minute now? Yeah, we should. A helicopter flew over them. Everyone crouched instinctively except Bob, who didn't have the space to do so. They have helicopters? Not for security, they're just airborne ambulances. Ronnie squinted at the lights dancing in the sky. Ambulance or not, that's the same model the army uses. The downpour had already begun to flood the parking lot. Ironic that it's taking place during a st storm with the water coming down from the water that they don't own. <laughs> also, it's rainy, it's neon. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, is her name meant to be pronounced Rainy? I don't... Th I don't... Is it? I don't think so, but that would have been cool. So. Anyway, this weather kind of reminds me of... Me too. So your excuse for going back is that you forgot your laptop? Yes, and meanwhile, you drive around the service entrance. I'll find disguises and then let you in. Remember that trench coats are traditionally worn together with felt hats and facial scarves. And alcoholism and a tragic backstory. I am sorry that I didn't have a lot of experience with disguises, but this has to stop. I tried my best. I came. I risked everything to help you. <laughs> just because I don't look good in a trench coat doesn't mean you can just... Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> don't worry, Doc. If we pull this off, you're going to get that experience. More than you'd like. Good luck, Norbert. Yeah, give him hell, Doc. And with a sigh, the visibly nervous Norbert got out of the car and walked to the front doors. As the doctor began talking to the guards at the gates, Amy slowly drove away. We can't stay put for too long. The drones will notice a car with people in it just hanging about and notify the guards. Don't worry, I'll park behind one of those huge trucks. We should be covered. The drive around the hospital took a while. Josephine half expected Norbert to be already be there waiting for them when they saw the surface exit. And there was someone, a young woman, a security guard. Amy turned off the engine. Guard, though. She should have seen the car. Though she should have seen the car, did nothing. Now what? Now we wait. They had to wait for some time. The mood in the car was tense. Amy still held onto the wheel with white knuckles. Bob couldn't stay still. Josephine found herself biting her lip and drumming on Amy's seat with her fingers. Where was Norbert? Only Ronnie seemed calm, but in the same way she always did, like a rusting tiger. So, Amy, you're some kind of union leader? Student union. SUAO is a feminist organization dedicated to fighting all kinds of oppression, from sexism to ableism to supporting oppressed nationalities. Oh. You don't do strikes then? Student unions that do strikes. A! I was in one. That's true, you were! It's true, you were! <laughs> We did a hunger strike once for two days, and we do a lot of boycotts. Cute. Who'd you bankrupt? Maybe if more people had joined us, that statue would okay. have been moved. <laughs> I think we get the point. Wait, you stopped eating because of a rock. What did that rock do to you? It was a statue of a war criminal in a public place. It was celebrating the loss of thousands of innocent lives. So, don't look at it and do something real. And what counts as real to you? Calm down, you're helping us erase debt. That's as real as it gets. Fighting for statues and hats isn't going to change anything. It though. wasn't a hat! It was a... Okay, <laughs> never mind. That statue was of a mining magnate. Hundreds died of poor conditions in his mines. I thought it was a war criminal or something. Terrible people tend to be terrible in many ways. 
we can agree on that. If you're one kind of asshole, then you're many kinds of asshole. True. Have you ever met a person that was just one kind of asshole? <laughs> I don't know. I, for example, have at least five. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but why don't you just join a regular union? It would be more what we're doing now and less petitions. Like a labor union? I think they are old-fashioned, a relic from a different economy. The biggest issue remaining in labor is the gender wage gap. Oh, Amy, sharp learning curve ahead. <laughs> so, you'll fight to tear down statues of blood-sucking assholes that died a hundred years ago, but not living workers? You know what would have saved those miners? A fucking real union. SUAO fights for all oppressed groups. We're fighting for you too, Bob. Every time I see it in the font, I'm like, Suro? <laughs> I'll fight my own fights, thanks. Guys, this political debate is fascinating, but can you try and stay focused? No. There he is. Norbert is talking to the guard. And there he was. He was anxiously gesturing to some something to the guard, but she only shook her head. I think he needs our help. Let him try. We want to be undetected. All he has to do is get the guard to go somewhere else for five minutes. And it needs to happen fast. The guard's talking to her watch. It's on. The next time Josephine's eyes found Ronnie, she was running in the rain already halfway to the door. Ronnie, no! The door she'd opened led in from the storm as well as Norbert's shouts that she couldn't quite make out. Let's go. As they scrambled across the thick wall of rain, they saw Ronnie arrive at the doors. The guard turned to meet her. Without saying a word, Ronnie punched her in the stomach, grabbed her taser from her belt, and used it on her. By the time Josephine got there, the guard, who was still limp from the shock, was wearing her own handcuffs. What the hell was that? You can't hurt people! I saved your ass, you idiot. She was calling for backup. No, she wasn't! She was going to call her boss to let him know that she was going to take a break! Oh yeah? And you just talked her into taking a break? She's an old friend of mine! I was supposed to meet her at the cafeteria after I checked on my last patients. They just had to come out of nowhere and beat her up. And now she's hurt! Oh. The guard was finally getting her breath back and began to pant and groan. Norbert! What the fuck is going on? Sally, I'm so sorry. I'll make this up to you, but we're going to have to tie you up now. This isn't how I wanted it to be. Bob lifted the guard quite gently in his arms and carried her to the car. Norbert followed, apologizing repeatedly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to make this right? I'm so I just I just want things to be better between us. <laughs> <laughs> Josephine looked at Ronnie with fury in her eyes. Why did you have to tase her? That was cruel. You could have just threatened her. I thought she was going to call for help. I had to take her out fast. Norbert could have handled it. Peacefully. How was I supposed to know? He and Miss Heavily Armed are best friends. I acted on instinct, okay? I get that Norbert wasn't there with us, but he saved my life just as much as you did. I trust him. D don't go against the plan again, even if your instincts say so. Fine. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me now, but do it later to Norbert. They're coming back. To Josephine's surprise, Amy was carrying Sally's uniform. This is my disguise. I'll push the rest of you until we reach the security HQ. Push? 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 <laughs> Circle wipe to like five seconds later. <laughs> As they're moving down the hallway. Push? <laughs> <laughs> The inside of a laundry cart was surprisingly nice, only her soaked clothes stood between Josephine in total comfort. The clothes in the mortal danger she was in. Norbert hadn't been able to locate any uniforms, but he had found a large cart that was carrying enough fresh sheets for an entire ward. The cart was a shaky metal contraption, like someone had glued together six seats of prison bars. Sets of prison bars. Not seats of prison bars, that wouldn't make sense. Who said that? Who I, said that? I don't know. I want, I want, I want, I want them out here in front. Names? The people they were the people inside were covered up by the sheets. 
but since the cart had no proper floor, they had to balance themselves on the thin metal bars. The hardest for Bob, who wasn't exactly a professional acrobat. It didn't help that both Josephine and Ronnie were holding on to him, but there was no other way. Damn! <laughs> Amy looks good in a security uniform. Norbert and Amy pushed the wagon on. I like how everyone gets, like, multiple outfits. And the only one that's gotten, gotten a new outfit yet is Bob. Yeah, he needs a new outfit. Come on, where's the, where's the, where is makeover, my Bob makeover, dress up mini game? Makeover, 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 makeover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. This was is... a hard doing, by the way. Oof. This is heavy. Why are these carts pushed by hand? This place makes cybernetic hearts, but can't make electric carts? They used to be self-propelling, then we had a series of accidents in the elderly ward that prompted a lawsuit. Oh, I guess this is safer then. Usually is. <laughs> How are you guys doing there? So far, so good. Maybe it's best that me and Bob are hidden completely. It is, for a lot of reasons. Uh, for one, large groups invite questions. A security guard and a surgeon pushing a laundry cart is strange enough as it is. I honestly don't know how convincing I can be as a guard. You'll do fine. Maybe don't talk more than you must. If anyone asks, you're new. In a place this big, that shouldn't pose any problems. Maybe we should talk less? We're supposed to be sheets. Bob? Didn't you hear? I'm a sheet. What <laughs> is it? Could you maybe walk? Like in here? Yeah. Put your legs through the bars. I'm having trouble pushing the three of you. On it. And slowly their little Trojan horse advanced. Along the way, nurses and guards greeted Amy. Norbert met some co-workers and twice they stopped so he could engage in some small talk. For everyone else, those moments were excruciating. More than once, someone offered to help, and Amy and Norbert both had to make excuses as to why they really didn't need any. Why are these bloodsuckers so goddamn helpful? Josephine thought. The security HQ was behind just one more hospital door. This one had two men armed with guns guarding it. Amy and Norbert parked the cart close by and went to talk to the guards. Josephine struggled against the urge to pee. Every step towards the armed men took a massive effort from Amy. Norbert didn't look any more pleased with the situation. Hey there. Good evening. You new here? Yeah, I just started today. Look, I'm supposed to take this dock to the restricted area, but I need the key for that. I haven't given you one yet? Oh, I suck with that. I'm supposed to give you everything on the first day, but I didn't get a taser for weeks. Right? I mean, come on. What's so hard about that? How can I work without my fucking keys? It's because the keys are the restricted water for officers only? Josephine's heart skipped a beat. Wait, what? I mean... You don't have a key for that area because you're not supposed to. Didn't you listen to the briefing I gave this morning? Wait, were you even at the briefing? I don't remember you. I... No, I wasn't. I wasn't supposed to start until next week, but there was trouble today and they called me in the afternoon. I tell you what kind of trouble? I heard some patients held a doctor hostage and escaped. Which doctor? This one right here. Dr. Maturana. He was just telling me about it. How's your nose, Doc? I saw the footage. They clocked you hard. Well, I'm just glad they didn't stab me with a needle. It's actually why I needed to get this restricted area. I wanted to review some of the footage and see if I can't recognize the intruders. We got professionals on that, Doc. You just worry about robot organs. Exactly! That's the other reason. I may have found a safe way to activate the trackers on the patients. Now that's something. Can't give you the key, but I can take you there. Just leave the car. Actually, I'm headed that way anyway. I could use a push. Forget it, Rookie. You need some more muscle. You can walk with us, though. Josephine's heart beat like a machine gun as the cart rolled into motion again. Bob helped again by walking as quietly as he could. Luckily, the wheels in the cart shrieked loudly with every movement, keeping the guard from hearing Bob's shoes. The guard was a talkative fellow and asked a lot of questions. Amy was able to dodge most of them, but every passing second increased their chances of getting caught. Somewhere amongst the endless textiles, Josephine found Ronnie's hand. Squeezing it made her feel better. Breathing was hard inside the cart, but it was incredibly hot. The restricted area wasn't far away, and soon they were almost there. And then the guard stopped to put a hand to his ear. Amy sensed immediately that something was horribly wrong. The guard listened for a while, then turned around, looking very worried. Change of plans, one of us has been tied up in a car outside. We're in a lockdown. Follow me, rookie. I'll keep you safe. No, you won't. 
What? What? <laughs> Bob, emerging from the sheets, grabbed the guard with both hands, then fell on top of him. Ronnie was lightning quick to grab his gun. The guard screamed. Shut him up, cover his mouth, anything. Norbert tore a large piece of sheet and shoved it into the guard's mouth until the screams were muffled. Put him in the cart and leave it. We're almost there. But we lost our escape car. Which means they've connected you to us. We can't go back to your apartment. In fact, you can't do that either. I... All my clothes are there, and my books! <laughs> Prisons have, uh, decent libraries, in my experience at least. Yeah, and that uniform suits you. Don't worry! My charger is in the apartment. I'm going to die without a replacement. Fuck. Where do we store them? I can make a detour and catch up to you. Splitting up is too dangerous. We can seal an ambulance to escape with. It'll have another charger on board. Let's go, we're almost there, and the guards have been alerted. While Amy and Norbert kept watch, the rest wrapped up the handcuffed guard tightly in sheets and buried him under them in the cart. The whole process took no longer than two minutes. Amy was clearly shaken about the whole affair. She said nothing and just followed the group with an air that suggested that she was having second thoughts. Josephine kept one hand on her heart. How long would she have to live like this, keeping track of the time she had to live, or else sit tight next to a power source? 267 Norbert had spoken of a year. That suddenly seemed like an impossibly long time. Soon she had to shake off the creeping desperation. Oh, right, because the notion is that because our body hasn't fully accepted the implant yet. Yeah. That we have to keep our keep our. But once the body kind of adjusts to it and accepts it, then it'll then it'll provide the motions on its own essentially to keep. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 The watches they'd stolen from the guards began to buzz. What is it? More bad news. He turned up the volume, and they heard it, too. Attention all security personnel. Escape patients have been located inside hospital premises. Converge on location. Secure all exits. <sighs> For fuck's sake. They turned it on. They turned on the trackers. So it seems. We have to flee now. Did you set us up? Because if you did, I'm going to kill you. He didn't. How do you know? If he had sold us out, why didn't he lead us into an ambush when we were all inside the car? We were much easier prey than. Josephine's right. Maybe it's because people don't act rationally at all times? <laughs> so is the doc. We gotta get out of here. This plan just blew up. There's no point. They'll track us anywhere we go. It's do or die now. Emphasis on the die. I shouldn't have said that. That's really morbid. <laughs> <laughs> and how are we supposed to not die? They know where we are. They're coming. No, they know where Bob and I are. And they're coming for us. We can use that. We have to split up. Wait, are you saying... No, we're not doing that. We have no choice. Bob and I will act as bait and lead them away from the restricted area. The rest of you get in there and shut down those computers. I should come with you. You might need protection. No, you have more computer skills than anyone here. We need you up there with Norbert. Amy should go too. I don't want to endanger anyone you else. You don't need computer skills to run a magnet over everything. <laughs> I, I think you'd be surprised. Which part does the magnet go on, huh? All of it. <laughs> Just see put it over everything. See, that's the computer skills we're talking about here. <laughs> this is crazy. Where can we even go? What's farthest away from where you two are going? You remember that hallway where donated organs are stored? That's it then. We should all run like hell now. Stay safe, Joe. I won't. <laughs> you two, we'll meet you in the ambulance yard. Take this. It's no use. <laughs> he handed them one of the guards' watches. You'll be able to hear their comms. Josephine nodded, then she and Bob ran, leaving their three companions behind. How do we get there? No idea. Keep running. This is great. The hospital heist. Huh. The three infiltrators stood there, stunned. And let's go. We can't waste time. They made their way up two staircases. Ronnie and Amy were both regular runners and had no trouble upping the pace, but Norbert clearly did. Doc, if you don't catch up, I'm leaving you behind. That would be best if I wasn't the only one who knew the way. 
Why are you helping us? Excuse me? You heard me. You work for this nightmare industry. The way I see it, you have nothing to gain and everything to lose. That's bold speech coming from formal military. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't exactly been a humanitarian either. You're not wrong, but you're also dodging the question. The same reason as you, I bet. Josephine is away with people. She w makes me want to be a better person. Huh. Either you're very honest or a very good liar. I think that's the whole point there, is that, like, every single one of them is... has either benefited or been taken advantage of uh, the capitalist structure. Mm -hmm. And every one of them has been complicit in it in some way. Yeah. But that doesn't stop them from deciding to change for the better. Which in this case means... Do a erased. heist. <laughs> Reverse heist, really. No, no, it's a heist. They're, they're stealing uh, everyone's debt. <laughs> that's still heist. They're not. They're not stealing it. They're making it vanish. They're making it van th That's even better. It's effectively, they're breaking into a building to give everyone in there a lot of money. It's yes. a reverse. It's a reverse heist. heist. <laughs> Remember, kids, the best thing you can do for society is to erase debt. <laughs> that's the one takeaway I want everyone to get. <laughs> can you guys please stop bickering? We have to. Uh, we're there. Norbert pointed to a corner ahead of them, then to the left, then held up two fingers. Ronnie understood immediately. It took Amy a second longer. Behind the corner, there would be two guards at the door to the restricted area. Ronnie held up the gun she'd taken. Norbert held up the two fingers again. They were outgunned. Amy's guard watch buzzed. Attention all security personnel targets have moved to floor B3. Secure all staircases and elevators. We have no time for a plan. And with Ronnie on point, they turned around the corner and were faced by two armed guards, just like Norbert had indicated. Oh, who are you? Lower your gun! To make the point, the guards raised their guns. Calm down, my name is Garcia. I work in the mental health ward. Shift was ending and I'd already changed clothes when all hell broke loose. I didn't want to miss the fun. Oh, and who are your companions? Rookie here's on her first shift. Can you imagine? Kendrick, I started this afternoon. Welcome aboard. Some first day, huh? What are you doing here? Mmm, relieving you. The guards look suspicious. We haven't been briefed. They want all hands down there. I'm not wearing uniforms, so I'm a liability, and Rookie doesn't have the experience, so... They told us to relieve you, so you can join the operation in the basement. Well, I hate to miss the action. What's with the doctor? They took me hostage before. To be frank, I'm just scared shitless. I figured I would be safe here. I don't know, this is a breach of protocol. Do you even have clearance for this sector? No, neither of us has clearance or the keys, but we don't need those to stop people from entering, do we? I guess you don't. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm heading downstairs. Garcia will stay here with the Dr. Fletcher here. The other guard nodded approvingly. Clearly, he wasn't the one in charge. Taking the rookie with me. Trust me, most shifts don't get this exciting. You don't want to miss this. But... That's an order, Kendrick. Don't worry. Stay behind me. You'll be just fine. You shouldn't see stay here. Why don't you take Fletcher? He's got more experience than a gun. Good point, Garcia. Give your gun to Kendrick. Fletcher's got a knee injury. He can't run. Uh, all right then, sir. You point the way. And Amy nodded to the others, mustering a hint of a brave <laughs> face. If you say so. Take this. Safety's on. Ronnie handed her the gun. They watched in silence as Amy jogged away behind the large guard. I don't know what I'll do if something happens to that kid. Fletcher turned to them. She'll be fine. The soldiers are the best in the business. We're soldiers together. Oh yeah? Where'd you serve? Fourth Marines, before I busted my knee, you? Engineers. Among other outfits. Say, is that the new model submachine gun? It is specifically designed for crowd control and pacifying densely populated districts you want to see? Sure thing. Ani began inspecting the gun and testing its weight. I like how it feels. So what happened to your knee? How bad is it? Shrapnel from an IED. Best runner in the unit before it. Now I can't run at all. Every time I bump it, it hurts like hell. Still? Yeah, see how we got to favor the right even when I'm standing? Without the Sarge, I probably wouldn't even have this job. It's ironic how you can work in a hospital and never get treatment. I know, right? If I got hurt on the job, they ship my ass to a cheaper hospital than bill me for the ride. <sighs> I'm really sorry for this, you know. Nah, yeah, don't be. If life goes on, I got a steady job and friends. That's a lot more than many other vets have. Yeah. Which is why I'm so, so sorry about this. Ronnie swung the rifle as hard as she could straight into Fletcher's left knee. The guard let out a hair-raising, shrill cry and fell to the ground, clutching the knee. Norbert kneeled by him and put a folded piece of fabric in his mouth. Bite on this. And then Norbert tased the man before wrapping his hands behind his back and using the man's own handcuffs on him. 
I really am sorry. We vets should stick together more. If the knee gives you trouble, eat some of these. Opiates will get you addicted. These should be safer. Then Norbert proceeded to use his key. There were two sets of steel doors that slowly creaked open. Ronnie, gra Ronnie grabbed the moaning Fletcher and carried him on her shoulder inside. Then Norbert closed the doors. Most gods won't be able to follow us. Good. Now, do we know where the servers are? We need to find a place for Fletcher to lie down in. We need to take the elevator. They're on the top floor. Hang in there, Fletcher. We'll put you down somewhere nice with a view. Nice work in there. You too. Sorry I was such a dick earlier. Maybe you just care about Josephine as much as I do. Fletcher's watch buzzed. Attention all security personnel. Targets have moved to B4. Same procedure. Proceed with caution. Barricades and makeshift obstacles reported. Should they be heading lower? No, they've gotten lost. And now they're as low as they can get. With no way out. Damn. How are things going to turn out here? Yeah. <laughs> the basement was dark. Josephine had made sure of it. They'd turned off all the lights and Bob had destroyed the switches. Now their hiding place was surrounded by a comforting sea of darkness. Only the bl But, except for one thing. Yep. Only the blinking lights from different machines formed tiny islands of red, green, and blue around the room. The lowest floor was clearly where the hospital stored everything. There were long, there were long rows of extra hospital beds, backup machinery, and sheets that were still wrapped in plastic. They were hiding behind some large crates. They didn't know what was in them. You have to hold something to cover your chest. I do? Oh! Her chest was glowing brightly in the dark. Quickly, she grabbed a pillow and held, held it over the glow. Why not just button up your uniform like you have in your, in your artwork? <laughs> Better. Why was it never this dark when we tried to sleep? Feel free to take a nap if you're tired. Fuck, I hate being bait. We could actually be doing something useful. Maybe later. You hear that? There were noises coming from down the corridor. They're closing in. I gotta say, I could be dying in worse company. It's settled then. We won't surrender? Hell no. Someone was at the doors of the hall they were in. They were trying the lock. They left the door to this hall open and locked the one on the right with the guard's keys they'd carried. Bob had broken the window on the door, so Josephine could wiggle back out once she'd shoved someone's desk and captains to block the doors. They could only hope that the guards wouldn't think a door barricaded on the other side was the obvious place to search first. They'd created a series of locked rooms. Oh my god! <laughs> With my power, I can create and destroy any type of locked room! <laughs> the power to check notes, break a window, and wriggle back out of it. I think you solved it. I, th I, th I think you got it. Truth be told, they didn't know how accurately the tracker could pinpoint them. Hopefully not very. The door opened with a creak. A flashlight scouted the room from the doorway, slowly illuminating every section. Josephine held her breath. The guard watch buzzed. Only this time it was someone from the command center. Someone with Ronnie's voice. Attention, all security personnel. There has been a camera sighting of the targets on the ground floor, south wing. Trackers are misleading. Converge on the cafeteria. Where should we go? Nowhere. From this vantage point, we can see the southern exit and two elevators. Two corridors lead here. See anyone not wearing a uniform? I want you to spray them with fire. Shoot them? I thought... They've taken some of us out. They might be too dangerous to be useful. No one would buy their labor. More efficient to just eliminate them. Oh. Alright then. Don't be scared, they're most likely not carrying firearms. A shootout in a hospital just seems extreme. We don't know what they want here. We may have we have to defend this facility, its property, and its patients. <laughs> Notice the order those went in. Yeah. <laughs> Amy went silent. They'd taken cover inside a form information booth at a ground floor lobby. The security guard was right, a lot of roads lead to them. She tried twice to talk her way out of it by proposing to watch over different staircases or elevators, but the man had been adamant they would stay together. She had to get rid of him somehow. So where'd you work before this? At the university. They have guards there? Oh yeah, students cause trouble sometimes. Those rich kids don't know anything about causing trouble. What's the worst you had to deal with? 
demonstration, some professor said something and all the snowflakes wanted him fired. Oh, what do you say? Called some girls whores when he complained that he when they complained that he'd harass them. Was he fired? Eventually, after two weeks of protests, a lot of fuss for nothing in my opinion. Good, dicks like that shouldn't be allowed to work at all. Amy was stunned. Security guards weren't all sexist? I mean, I guess. I'm serious, what kind of sleazy old professor thinks it's his place to hit on some fucking teens? Good point, I didn't think about it that way. All I knew is those teens made me stand in the rain for four days straight. The guard laughed. I'm glad you're here, Kendrick. You and I will get along just fine. When you have some more experience, I can get I can get you promoted to guarding the restricted area. Amy constantly had a hand on her taser. How is this guard so nice? And how is she supposed to link up with anyone? Norbert and Ronnie had ridden the elevator to the highest floor in the building. They were as far apart from the others as they could be. They laid Fletcher on a table. He seemed perfectly happy just resting there. Norbert even let him eat some painkillers and have a drink of water. Ronnie rushed to make the announcement on the intercom. The command center was large, completely round room full of computers. There were no people there. The space was dominated by big towers with lots of blinking lights on them. Where? Oh. Oh no. <laughs> I've started to even sound like her. <laughs> oh god. Where is everyone? The system is automated. The station is manned only during emergencies. Mm, this isn't one? Apparently not. There's a program tracking Josephine and it also follows the cameras. Then let's not waste time shutting it down. Ronnie removed the safety from her gun. Don't do that! We might- we must find out which one. I accidentally shut down all life support in the hospital. Oh. That would be bad, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, get to it. I'll check the monitor, see where the guards are. I'll find the debt records. Most of the guards are- are leaving the basement, but all exits are still heavily manned. Oh, crap. What? The ambulance garage is flooding with police. Of course. Escape is technically illegal. But breaking in and beating people up isn't. I'm guessing the hospital is surrounded. Our escape plan keeps getting more and more complicated. I still have an idea. Ronnie rushed back to the intercom. Attention all security personnel, the upper floors in the helicopter pad are now fully secure. Move downstairs and coordinate search with the police. The helicopter pad- Oh you bloody genius! Ha ha ha! If they really are the army type, then I can fly one. <laughs> just Hell keeps, yeah! This just keeps getting better! I found it. The tallest tower has all the debt records, and that one with the screen turned on controls on the tracking devices. Can you hack into them? Sure, I can, I guess, but... Do, do they have a gate? <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie sprayed the tracking station with automatic fire until her magazine was empty. And that should do it. Open the window. Ronnie found a desk with wheels on it, and together they pushed the debt records tower until it came crashing down on the table. The table's upper level cracked, but it held together. Robert opened a large window, and they pushed both the table and then the records tower towards it, inch by inch. Finally, the heavy contraption hit the window. Ronnie climbed on the desk and lifted down the end of the tower out of the window. Then they pushed the rest. The heavy tower instantly disappeared from view. They waited for a long time before, the, before they heard a mighty crash. We just dropped billions of dollars worth of debt into oblivion. I bet some corporate bosses are going to have a grumpy morning. They brought, it on, they brought it on themselves. Impressive computer skills, by the way. If you meet a problem you can't solve with bullets, you can always drop it from really high up. <laughs> Is that a real saying? No, but it should be. Let's go, we can only hope the others get to the helipad alright. <laughs> this is great! Police cars outside flashed their red and blue lights, making the lobby look like a disco. The helipad announcement had come seven minutes ago. Amy knew she was short on time. As commanded, Annie was always pointing her gun towards the northern hallway while the guard pointed it his at the southern. Got a feeling we're close to finding those fuckers. One would think the police have the resources to really comb this place. Oh, they're not going to come in. Policemen are the state's responsibility. They'll stay out of any danger if they can. They'll just sit there? Most likely. The elevator opened up with a ping and two guards came out. They headed for the doors as all the others before them. This was her own moment, Amy realized. To do or die. With a scream, she shot a long burst of fire down the empty hallway. The gun kicked and shook in her hands. The sound almost made her deaf. She wasn't faking her shock when the guard turned around. You saw something? A skinny woman, about my size. I don't think I got her. 
Stay here, you two follow me! The guard leapt out of the info booth and gestured for the other two guards to follow. As soon as they disappeared behind a corner, Amy bolted for the elevator and slammed the buttons that would take her to B4. She dropped her gun, disguised, disgusted and afraid of its power. Not that shooting a gun hadn't been terribly exciting. Amy just didn't like how much she'd enjoyed it. This is fucking great! Josephine heard gunshots. Dimly, yes, but she knew the automatic what automatic fire sounded like. And all felt like. All the guards had left their floor on command. The only one by the door was the closest one. They're shooting out there. A while ago, all our pals were clearly on the top floor. That shooting was much closer. Maybe they're coming for us? More likely, some trigger-happy guards got jumpy, or they're trying to scare us out. The others are probably still up there. Still alive. And heading for the roof, which means we'll have to make that detour and get me one of those life support things. Ah, reckon it's safest if we do that afterwards. This place has too many guards, and you still have hours to go. Do you have any idea what it's like having a goddamn timer on your life? Actually, a timer would be infinitely better, because at least then I could be sure. <laughs> but all we have is this timer that's like up in the upper left corner, and I can't even reach it. Only the narrators <laughs> know. Well, it's, is such, it's, it's such a weird piece of dramatic irony. Right? I fucking hate dramatic irony. <gasps> oh, wait, what if we, the player, are the ones monitoring her heart? <laughs> oh, no. But the, the thing is that like it, it, the monitor isn't an exact timer, mm -hmm. right? It, it's it's more like an it's more like a stamina bar yeah. where doing certain things takes down more of it. And it's like anyway, I just like the idea that there is a timer, but she can't reach it because of dramatic irony. <laughs> <laughs> now I just have a feeling, a vague idea that might be off. God knows by how much. And what if Norbert misremembered it or I do now? I could just drop dead any second. Hey, calm down. Listen, I'm sorry. I should have thought before opening my stupid mouth. The doc is too smart to screw that up, and he can find you a new one. And if there's guards in the way, well, I've seen army girl punch. Bob put a hand on her shoulder. It'll be fine. And eventually you'll get to that thing where you don't need power. Then I'll race you on foot. Or we can go hunting in the desert. I'm not sure how I feel about killing animals, but thanks. You know how to calm a woman down. Tell that to all my exes. They'll laugh in your face. Now, I don't know how long we have to hang his babe, so anything else on your mind? Well, I have a feeling this is never going to end. What? I mean, even if we get out of here, we're still going to be fugitives. For the rest of our lives. Exactly. I'm starting to think that maybe escaping this nightmare isn't going to work. Maybe we should embrace it. What do you mean? Josephine didn't get a chance to answer. Someone burst in through the door, shouting. Josephine, Bob, come on, we have to go. There's an elevator that can take us straight to the roof. Amy, we're coming. Did they try to shoot you? I shot. You heard it? Josephine embraced her. Yes, I'm glad you're okay. Are you guys done upstairs? I don't know. We got split up, but I heard Ronnie's message that specified the helipad, so I guessed it was time to leave. I agree. Let's get out of here. Well done, rich girl. Well done, heart attack man. <laughs> the helicopter was already warming its engines when they got to the helipad. Ronnie was in the cockpit while Norbert waited outside, anxious. Josephine wasn't the least bit surprised to learn that Ronnie knew how to fly a helicopter. She ran straight into Norbert's arms. He held her for a long time, and she gave him a kiss on the cheek. Norbert was holding a charger in his hands, of course. The helicopter was an ambulance, too. Inside, they all tried shouting various things, but couldn't hear anything over the roar of the engines. Eventually, Josephine just went and hugged Ronnie from behind. She understood the signal, and the ambulance chopper began rising up. As the hospital slowly got smaller, Norbert attached Josephine to the power cord. She sighed with relief. Oof, we were getting low. Some shooting across the evening sky, they saw a horde of blinking lights surrounding the hospital. Police had brought the whole department, it seemed. 
and those police couldn't do a thing. They couldn't be tracked. They were safe. For the time being. Even more importantly, the next board meeting at Jenner Private Hospital Incorporated was going to be a very tense one. Hell yeah! Gee, I'm glad they don't keep backups, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, paper records or anything. <laughs> yep. There was a stupefied silence among the group. They couldn't believe their luck. And yet somehow they pulled it off. They'd flown east at full speed, then Ronnie had pulled up and they'd flown south at a higher altitude. They couldn't go back to Amy's place, they'd instead gone to Amy's parents' place, a lofty house in the upper districts. They were traveling light now, so the house was empty. They covered up the chopper carefully before entering. Oh, never mind. Anyone would notice a chopper- okay, never mind. <laughs> they're not- they're not quiet, they're loud! Someone- neighbors will notice! <laughs> it's the future, maybe they're really quiet in the future. <laughs> that's not a chopper, that's a hind! <laughs> <laughs> I understand I'm asking a lot. All of us could die. We're bound to run out of luck sooner or later. We could still get away. There's enough gas in the chopper for one more long ride. I don't think we can. We've pissed off the hospital and water industries. They won't stop looking. So you want to pour gasoline on the embers? I want to pour water. On everyone. Like we did at the house. Show Nephthys they, they can't own the things people need for living. Ah, uh, like, someone needs to stick it to those stinky rich murderers. Okay, but are we still hanging the bodies from the gardens? Can that <laughs> still happen? Maybe. I don't think I could go back to my old life without regret. I'm in. As am I. We erased billions worth of hospital debt today. I feel like I've done more good now than in a lifetime of medicine. What about you, Ronnie? I guess I owe it to the world to do some good. What's your master plan for bringing down Nephthys? What's the one thing that can hurt Nephthys? People not buying water. And who would buy water that someone else is giving away for free? Oh, I love this. This is great! Oh, hell yeah! Jimmy set the can in place carefully, while Angie watched eagerly. They were building a sand skyscraper. It was almost as tall as Little Thomas. They'd made it by sticking tin cans and covering them with sand. They used plastic straws to make the water pipes. Angie had found shards of glass that made for beautiful windows. Behind them, the sun was setting in the desert. They were at the edge of the city, where the concrete jungle gave way to a vast wasteland plain. One could stand in the shadow of the vast hovels of the city and gaze upon dunes, hills, and canyons as far as the eye could see. Coming here to play was as close as the children would ever get to a beach. Katrina knew. She watched her three children play in the sand while also keeping an eye out for trouble. Out here on the edge of the city, they were very exposed. Katrina could hardly could handle herself, but didn't want to risk the kids. Jimmy! Angie asked, taking the time to sound out the words carefully. Why hasn't anyone built real houses here? They would sink in the sand, Jimmy said knowingly. But we don't sink in the sand, Angie pointed out. You're lighter than a house, aren't you? Aww. None of them. <laughs> None of them were. Katrina was painfully aware of it. There were days when she had to skip mills so they didn't have to. Why is there so much sand? Angie pressed. There wouldn't be a desert if there wasn't sand, would it? Jimmy replied, irritated. He was trying to dig a door to the bottom floor. Angie stomped. But why? Why is it a desert? Oh no, why? Why, why is it a desert? Yeah, why? Easy, said Jimmy. There was a mountain, and then someone blew it up with a nuclear bomb. Jimmy made a big explosion noises. Annie, Angie laughed. Sierra told me it was a big sandstorm. Angie countered. Yeah, of course. After the big bomb. Boom. Angie laughed harder. Little Thomas didn't really understand what was going on, but laughed anyway. We, we need more windows. Jimmy exclaimed. He took an empty beer bottle from the ground and threw it against a rock. It shattered. Angie screamed. Little Thomas began crying. Jimmy! Don't throw glass like that, you'll cut yourself or your sister! Katrina took little Thomas and held him. I'm sorry, Mom, I didn't mean to. Now the boy was sobbing. I know you didn't, love. We have to go now and do that thing I told you about. I'm gonna need your help. 
Can we take a bath after that? Angie asked. Katrina smiled. Yes, you can. What is this strange prelude? Ronnie with an apron. <laughs> Ronnie's got the apron again. Who wants tacos? Me. It's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> uh, actually, it's Thursday. I said it was Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Ronnie was wearing a cooking apron again. A sweet and tender smell spread throughout the room as she opened the oven. Josephine heard her stomach grumble. Hell yes, I'm starving. Bring it on. Do we have beer? In the fridge, help yourself. Yeah, I'm waiting for the other foot to fall and be like, the news tomorrow, like, thankfully there were backup servers. <laughs> it was a rainy Tuesday night. They were all gathered at Amy's parents' house. Like every other night. Like every night for a while now. Fortunately, the house was big. Hanging out all together in Amy's flat for this long would have driven them insane. Bob, can you let me have one too? Is the good doctor getting drunk? Gracious me. One beer is what I prescribe myself to stomach the amount of chili in that food. Don't worry, Doc. I made two sets. Half are Ronnie's specials and the rest are weakling safe. <laughs> I'll take a special then. I knew you would. Watch out, it's hot. Josephine took a bite. It was delicious. There was garlic, avocado, and a dozen spices she didn't recognize. And then the chili hit her. Her mouth was on fire. She felt tears flowing down her cheek. The whole group was watching her. Josephine smiled as broadly as she could and swallowed. It's heavenly. What are you guys waiting for? Are you scared of food? I am now. Weakland safe taco for me. I want a special. I've changed my <laughs> mind. Special for me too. What? Are you afraid you look like a weakling compared to me? No, I just changed my mind. People do that. <laughs> People change their mind. It doesn't have to be for any reason. <laughs> sure you did. You've got some sauce on you, Josephine. Already? Damn. Can you pass a paper towel? Holy moly, you make spicy food. Yeah, is someone paying you to kill us? <laughs> oh, guys. What is it? Ronnie smiled her most innocent smile. I may have gotten my jars of paprika and chili mixed up. Hey, it's not my fault your parents kept keep everything in identical jars. <laughs> That's it. I'm switching to a weak one. It's not bad, Ronnie, as long as you have bread and beer and don't mind losing your hearing for a while. <coughs> Watch your tongue, I'll make you eat chili from the jar. As they ate, they went over their plan for the night. Where are we gonna hit this time? Are we finally getting to the slums? No, the farther downtown we go, the more we enter the realm of the private security firms. How are they different from the police? We're going to be just as dead if they catch us. Yes, but security firms have fewer qualms about collateral damage and terror tactics. Joe and I have some first-hand experience. One of you on both sides of it. Ronnie shot Norbert a venomous look. Ronnie shot Norbert. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie shot Norbert. That's it. GG. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everyone. This has been Vengeful Heart. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. Which is why I'm advising against operating in parts of the city where the security is fully privatized. One of the many general rules of life in the city was that one descended, as one descended downtown, police officers became security guards. The reason was mostly fiscal. Policemen had insurance. City Hall was very reluctant to send policemen into situations in which they might die. Pacifying downtown slums was better left for hired guns. As an added benefit was that when the security firms went over the line in their affinity for repressive violence, the police were not directly at fault. Security companies could escape any scandals by firing those responsible, changing their names, then rehiring the fired employees into the new company. Because that's never happened! <laughs> I understand your frustration, Bob. The people in the slums are the ones who need us the most. Almost everyone in this city needs our help. But no one will get it if we're killed. Which is why we're hitting a pipe 
down from here, but above the forest neighborhoods. They're also the kind of people who can voice their opinions most effectively. <sighs> Alright then, let's go give free water to a bunch of middle-class housewives. But this can't continue forever. I promise it won't. I'm not happy with our progress either. Our attacks are too small. It's like trying to dam a flood with a band-aid. I like how this went from taking revenge specifically on the hospital where that got their bills to let's fuck up society and death. <laughs> which, let's let's destroy the water utilities. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm cool with it. It's just like wow, and like ugh, what about our latest? I know these latest attacks are just too small. <laughs> Sane enough to work with. I see. I see. <laughs> Well, they're big enough to be on the news. Look! Good evening. This is Channel 411 Metro News. Uh, I'm Chris River. And I'm Tina McAllister. We have p permanently plastered faces. <laughs> Study indicates there's a 0% chance, chance she ever gave you her actual number. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored content! Hot singles in your area. <laughs> we guarantee your spouse will n oh will not find out. <laughs> Top story tonight is the the wave of domestic terrorism that continues to keep the city in a stranglehold. Wait, did we fast forward a few weeks? I think so. City's best divorce attorneys ranked by attractiveness. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme in tonight's Chiron. <laughs> A mysterious, violent group has sabotaged water pipes all around the city in a string of attacks over the past two months. Oh, we have gone forward! Oh, I'm like, suddenly everyone's talking like they're moving forward, but yeah. Uh, authorities believe that the group may have a connection to the terrorists responsible for the infamous housing block massacre six months ago. Oh, that suddenly moved on to terrorists. Oh my god. So, so far, the police have been unable to catch the culprits, leading many to question the efficacy of public law enforcement. As a special guest, we again have the honor of talking to Frances Brayback, CEO of Neptis Incorporated. Look at my smug grin. <laughs> Stay with us as we ask him why the t t terrorists seem to have targeted the city's water providers and what can be done to s stop the attacks. Hello, Chris and Tina. It's good to be back. Good evening, Mr. Brabeck. First, I would like to ask you, why do you think your company has been so viciously and targeted? I, I would also like to, to ask you a question. How come you never re return my calls? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had something special. <laughs> we can only guess at the motivations of terrorists. Remember that the same group slaughtered 57 civilians six months ago for no apparent reason. So now the story has turned to that they're the group responsible for killing everyone in there instead of the, oh my god oh my god I can't I can't handle it the goal of every terrorist group is to inspire fear to me it seems that by hitting the water supply they can make thousands feel unsafe at once some are saying that the most recent attacks are proof that the police can, can no longer guarantee security in the city. Should, should that responsibility be transferred to the private sector? I have nothing but respect for the police force. Of course, it is more convenient for us to coordinate efforts with our own security subsidiaries. Some have said that corporate secrecy is hampering the efforts of the police. Should Nephthys be more open about its business practices? Well, Tina, another way to look at the issue would be that any information we release to the police might leak to the terrorists. By keeping our cards close to the chest, we avoid risking the lives of our agents. And what about your new central water supply? After these attacks, how do you feel about concentrating the city's water supply into one spot? I feel like it was the right choice. The facility, which will be finished soon will be as secure as a prison. And, uh, as and we all know. And also a prison. <laughs> oh, that, that was a very funny one. <laughs> Two thumbs up. 
Remember, the CWS will be where the water is drilled, purified, stored, and distributed. Keeping it safe is the number one priority for us, the police, and the military. And all three will cooperate to make it so. That sure sounds impressive. I would be happy to invite you to check it out for yourself, Tina, but Chris isn't invited. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never been more hurt in my life. Huh? <laughs> is, is this how you project me? <laughs> Francis, I, I thought, I thought we had something good together. <laughs> I'd be delighted to come. Hmm. The public has also been increasingly worried that water they paid for might be stolen by some g gangster. What steps is Neptis taking to make its water supply less vulnerable? Neptis has a mission to provide clean, affordable water to everyone. These terrorists who rob people of water are the antithesis of that mission. You can rest assured that no cost is too high for us in this struggle. We are directing all available resources to eliminating this threat to ordinary, hard-working citizens. We have added security, and we are currently in the process of building backup pipes across the city. What a relief! Would you like to send a message to the people before we conclude? It is my pleasure. What the terrorists want is to spread fear. Don't give them that, and they cannot win. Water is a human right, and we will protect your rights. Thank you, Mr. Brabeck, for the inspirational words, and screw you for breaking my heart. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Tina. Oh. And stay safe, citizens. <laughs> you were going to say it, and then you decided not to. <laughs> On to our next story. The stock value of Jenner Private Hospital has come crashing down after a series of class action lawsuits. The company has been mired in legal setbacks after a fire on the hospital premises destroyed all client records, making billing nearly impossible. Could your insurance bill go up because of the carelessness of one hospital? Stay with us to find out. They're not even attributing that to the same group anymore. Yeah. Wow. Nobody wants to admit that what went on and yeah. who was at fault. No nothing that they're doing is actually getting... They called us terrorists. Terrorists! They called us ter- on, on the telly! Why would they do that? I'm not a terrorist. I'm- 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm an average Joe! <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. Everyone knows that terrorism is bad. It also implies murderous violence. Those who don't look into it more closely will think we're killing people. <laughs> they didn't blame the hospital sting on us. Could it be they haven't made the connection yet? Could be. I mean, I checked the police wanted list. I'm there for assault and sabotage at the hospital, as are Joe and Bob, but not the rest of you. Ah. Uh, oh. Oh my god, I keep losing my voice. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean they don't know we're involved. We're operating off of very limited intel. Perhaps they know that erasing the hospital debt was actually a pleasant surprise to many. Blaming it on us could make us more popular, not less. Perhaps. Fuck, this sauce isn't coming off. I'll go wash my clothes, and then we'll be off. Gotta wash up before a, uh, before a good water heist. <laughs> doing, a, doing a terrorist action with sauce splattered all down your... <laughs> 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 they're, they're, look, they're covered in blood! It's, <laughs> it's taco sauce! I told you we should have saved this for after... For before Taco Tuesday. <laughs> In the bathroom, Josephine scrubbed her vest and took a look in the mirror. She was almost unrecognizable. Not just her short hair or the glow coming out from her chest, but her face, her eyes. She'd always thought that her eyes smiled. Now they certainly didn't. As her heart. Am I interrupting? Not at all. Come on in. I was just washing up. I came to get all the medication we need. Good. I've hacked into almost all the medication we need. <laughs> Was there a stranger in the mirror? How did you know? I can see it. It would be strange if you couldn't. How? I'm still me. You are healing. You're stronger, more confident. And the way you look around you, one might think there's nothing you couldn't take on. You're showering me with compliments? Part of my affordable therapy? I'm afraid you're late on your payments. This was just me speaking my mind. 
Thanks. Being an outlaw suits you too. Really? I never considered myself an outlaw bad boy. Bad boy might be stretching it. You're giving free medicine to children. It doesn't really get nicer than that. And that's a whole different kind of attraction. Well, thank you. I I'd say that. That's enough compliments for now. If you want more, you'll have to earn them. <laughs> you've you you've exchanged all your current compliment points. Please <laughs> earn more. <laughs> Waiting until tomorrow to do another roll or paying sixty dollars for another <laughs> compliment. Gotcha. This is great. Oh no. Oh my. A, a gotcha, but it just replaces all the PNGs of anime girls with compliments. <laughs> Or PNGs of anime girls that are giving you compliments. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> oh, yes I can, gotcha game. I totally can. <laughs> Josephine left the room. Norbert chuckled to himself and followed. Downstairs, the others were waiting. Ronnie raised an eyebrow when Josephine and Norbert came down together. So, are we terrorists or what? I feel like terrorizing the suburbs. The car is running. We can go shake society to its core anytime you like. <laughs> Josephine detached her life support machine from her belt and unplugged the cord. A jolt of pain went through her. Six hours to live. The clock is ticking. Let's go. Smash that like, comment and subscribe.